And welcome to the Ada Box 01 live unboxing. Hey everybody, it's me, Lady Ada, and I'm also here with Mr. Lady Ada, who will be our floating skull host. Thank you, uh, floating skull. And uh, yeah, tonight we're going to uh, unbox Ada Box 001. I helped design it, so I can't know what's in it, but we're going to go through everything in the box and talk about what you can do with it and why we decided to put it in the kit. And uh, just have a fun time. And then maybe we'll show off a demo or two about what you can do with Box once you've finished unboxing it. That's right. And uh, we'll be sharing the joy. So if you want to get the kids around the computer, now's the time to start doing that. And the cats. We can unbox it together. Uh, we've gotten some uh, great tweets and more. If you want to follow along as we do this, take a photo of your unboxing and tweet it, pound Box. Uh, folks have been doing this, and so far it's been a lot of young kids cats. and cats kids. that have been exploring cats. the... Yeah. Kids? Yeah. Wait, can you identify which one's kids and which one's cats? Like, that's the, uh, that's yeah. the challenge. Yeah. And so, uh, Lady Ada. Okay. Let's unbox this. Okay, let's go to the overhead. Okay. Okay, so this is me, and uh, yeah, this is the box. So um, each box comes with a barcode. And uh, I got the warning because it contains a lithium battery. Yeah, we could talk about that um, just briefly. Yeah. Um, you know, shipping stuff in the U.S., we had to figure out a way to uh, add the cost of shipping as part of Box, And you have to ship the right way because mm. we include a battery. And so there's a battery stick. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you'll open this box. Yep. And inside is actually the Box. So yeah. to keep the box pretty, we box it in a box with a little bit of bubble wrap. Yeah. So remove. And what's cool th about this packaging you may not know, because how would you know? This packaging was actually uh, designed in-house by Adafruit team members, and it was printed, it was, you know, the cutout box was manufactured in the same building as Adafruit, there's a printing yeah. shop, and so that's where that's from. Bruce Yan, our creative director, uh, worked with the team on this. This is probably a culmination of like 50 people all together, and uh, we're really proud that this is uh, a project and more that uh, most of everything that we do is in the USA. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a global market, but we do like to do as much as we can in USA. So this was ha this happened to be in most of the building yeah. at Adafruit. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're like, wait, there's and, a print shop in the building. Let's and use it. And one other thing, um, I'll add me here okay. for a second. So some people bought these because they, um, they collect things, and they're already Adafruit experts and community members, and we very much appreciate that. So that's why we also made sure that it was in a uh, box so this box didn't get uh, damaged in shipping. Um, however, uh, I should make sure we say, you know, this is mostly meant for beginners and people that are just starting their journey. That being said, um, I'm a collector of all sorts of things too. So I completely understand. Like I'm going to put an Ada box in a safe, like, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, Maybe even this one. Yeah, because I think it'd be neat to like look at 50 years from now or 10 years from now or five years from now, uh, the beginning of this like maker subscription service that we, we started for beginners. Um, but that's a little bit of, of history and a little bit of explanation, a little bit of where it came from. All right. Thanks, Floating Skull. Bye-bye. Mr. Lee. <laughs> Later. Okay. So um, the box is made of this cutout. So we take off the sleeve. And um, this is the about and then parts list. So it's, it's an introduction to Feather. So uh, Feather is the, a new ecosystem of boards and uh, plug-in parts that we uh, designed and like this beautiful uh, parts contents list. And it has the color, so like each box will have its own color. So this is this one, and we're gonna go through all this. But there's your URLs that you know you can go to the tutorial guide with for lots more information, and there's even a coupon code that you get. So that's cool, and a, yeah. the Twitter hash tag. Yeah, and we'll be adding uh, more and more um, things for AdaBox. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you haven't signed up, you should. Yeah, we're just getting started, literally. Um, and then this is our, actually this is a standard box size that we use. So this is our um, kit box size. And it's a lovely black box, has Adafruit on it. And then inside, wow, they even, we had to know about these stickers. So I guess we have these little stickers that say Ada box. You can kind of see it's shiny. Yeah, do you want to put the um, overhead arm down so we can get some close-ups while we do this too? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I can also explain a little bit about the um, so the tissue paper? Yeah, the tissue paper there? is Yeah, that really was nice. actually a fabric print that we wanted to do um, and wallpaper and also tissue paper. And now we've uh, got a chance to do it. So um, if you look really close, it's soldering irons, 
There's yeah. um, the Hold Adafruit on. flower. I'm, I'm so there's these little birds. Careful, trying yeah. not to rip this. Okay, so yeah, this wallpaper. Yeah. You can see there's a soldering iron, and there's these kind of beautiful doves that are with it, and then the Adafruit flower, and then little circuit board um, designs, and then yeah. you can see it's holding a you know a soldering iron and. And it's, it's, you know, it gets this, like, really nice cuff. So it's a little bit like the, um, like, you know, like, uh, like Delft, I want to say, and what's, the, like, the white and blue, I think, like, Delft pottery mm -hmm. and um, wallpaper that used to be, like, hand-drawn. So I think it's really beautiful. It has a lot of, yeah. like, circuit board elements in it. Um, but really nice. This tissue paper was... Uh, basically custom printed. Yeah, and you can use that for like re-gifting later. Like if you're gonna give someone some electronics, that's a nice touch. Yeah, this is cool. Oh, this, is, this is like really durable tissue paper too. Yeah. You, get, you get two pieces. Okay, so inside, um, the first thing you'll get is this pen. Limited edition. Limited edition, this is only available here. Yeah. And it also comes in a nice uh, cardboard, with black on black, and a, more of that sort of circuit board element design. Yeah. So this is the feather icon logo yeah. that we designed, Bruce designed, theme is feather. Feather, so we have a feather pen. So this is a, you know, it's kind of also has a little bit of circuit board element to it, but um, this is also the screen printed on, on the PCB. So this is the collectible pen. Yeah, and, and for you folks out there that uh, like pins, um, you know, Disney has a really interesting pin collecting community. Uh, all sorts of uh, pins are possible, and uh, we like the idea of you being able to show that you have an Ada box at like maker fairs or you can put on your backpack at schools like we do the ask the yeah. show and tell sticker so this is a neat way to like a very subtle like hey like and we also don't want to slap our logo or all over everything that you would wear this is a feather it's, you, i like that it's it, not an adafruit it doesn't logo. yeah there's not this like adafruit thing it's just more uh feather and you can talk to someone if they say oh that's a nice feather pin you can say oh it's this microcontroller platform that i'm learning and more okay so next up we're going to dive right into the meat of the kit, which is you get a feather board, and we solder headers onto this feather board as well. So it's just a yeah. solder free kit, and this is the feather, and it is designed to be an Arduino IDE compatible board. It has an Atmega 32U4, which is a popular microcontroller. It has an SD card for data logging, it has analog digital converter pins, it has a micro USB port that you can just plug right in. Um, on the bottom, all the pins are labeled, and um, Oh, keep it under, under the overhead. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, it's just like a uh, really lovely and uh, simple way to get started with microcontrollers. Um, yeah. Oh, and one thing about the um, soldered on headers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you watch uh, the Adafruit video channel on like YouTube or wherever, youtube.com slash Adafruit, you'll see some 360 videos and you'll actually meet some of the people that run the selective solder machine. Uh, the selective solder machine allows us to solder in all these things with the machine and uh, Vans and Noah will show you. They were also on our Labor Day uh, staff post. So the people who worked on this, you can uh, meet them virtually. And if you have the 3D goggles or the uh, Google Cardboard or a Vive or whatever, you can actually see inside of the machine and more. Yeah, All exciting. Right. Yeah. Okay, so next up is you get a full-size breadboard. And I'll open this up because I think it's worth showing how it works with feathers. So this breadboard, it's a, it, you know, we have a really awesome x-ray GIF um, that maybe I'll show when we go to um, the computer. Or I can go now if you want. Do you want to yeah. flip over? Yeah. Later? Okay, later. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can dig up the video while you're showing this right now. Okay. So um, this feather plugs in to the breadboard. It's a little easier if you do it not free-handed but on a flat surface so you can keep it even. So I'll put this down here and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go to the, the breadboard video for a second, all right? Okay, go for, go, yeah, go here. Right. We go, here we go. Yeah, so you can see inside there's these little clips that make it so um, when you plug a board in you get all these connections to make it easier to prototype. Okay. So um, Feather is designed specifically to plug into a breadboard which makes it really easy to uh, prototype your projects and add electronic components, which is what the kit is all about. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is the full size breadboard. So you get a nice large breadboard, it has like 800 solder points to it. And as you see, the feather plugs right in. The, the pins go right into the breadboard. And so you have a base that holds this steady. 
And then on the other side, we give you a um, NeoPixel feather wing. So this is kind of the most fun because it's like super glowy. And this is an accessory board, like a daughter board that plugs in and it gives you more capability. So it's like you have your feather and now having plugged something on top, you get a grid of red, green, blue LEDs and they're super bright. So this is kind of fun. You can make um, LED effects or um, you know, lighting electronics or small animations. I think that could be kind of fun. So this is an accessory. And we have like 50 different feathers and feather wings. So if yeah. once you get really good at feather, you're like, oh, I want to add GPS or I want to add um, like cellular capabilities or I want to add um, like a real-time clock or I want to add, you know, uh, different types of LEDs or whatever. Like we have, yeah, like 50, we Ethernet, Wi-Fi, whatever. You can add yeah. them all we wanted to, with Feather. Um, we wanted to have a platform that's included that unlocks more and more projects. So it's never ending. This isn't just like, oh, I can only do one thing with it, that's it. It can actually go on forever. Yeah. So that's the, that's the Feather and the Feather Wing and the breadboard. Right. And then next? the next thing is, oh, well, the USB cable, because that's an easy one. So you get a USB cable, and um, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's a data plus power USB cable, and you can plug it in to your Feather. Yeah, it comes like in Adafruit Black. So, it comes in Adafruit Black. And then you can use this to power and program the Feather because it's an Arduino compatible. You can use the Arduino IDE or, hey, if you're hardcore, you can write C code natively, whatever. Um, but to load the software on, you would use an, a USB cable. And this is a, a good data, it's a sync cable. Some people, they use like a low cost cable, but it doesn't have good data lines, they have issues. So we wanted to include a USB cable yeah. so you we knew. We actually thought about each part. Yeah, so you want to make more sure. Than, it does more than just power. Yeah. And then you can also use the USB cable to charge the battery. It has a built-in battery charger. So this is that lithium ion battery. And this is not something you have to use. This is an extra in the kit that we thought would be really cool. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable using lithium polymer batteries, you know, the batteries we have are tested. Um, they're, they, you know, there's certification for them, but we understand some people just don't feel comfortable using rechargeable batteries. That's okay, you don't have to use it. But if you do use it, um, you can take your project portable and you can plug it in. You can see it's running a simple blinky yeah. blink. And now you can take your project on the go. So it's a, it's a portable battery and then you can recharge it or the USB port. But what's neat is you don't have to use it. So you can um, unplug it and then um, just power it over USB. If you have like a USB battery pack, you can always just power it over that as well. The battery is an optional, but uh, really nice add-on. So I thought that made it cool for advanced users. So as you learn more and more about Feather, you can, and you get more comfortable with electronics, you can add the lithium battery to what you're building. Yep. Okay. So, so we're going through, yeah, we're going through this nice and, and easy. Okay. So next up we have wires. So these are premium jumper cables and um, we use these to wire up electronics. So what's nice about a breadboard is it gives you this grid and then you can, it's like a loom. You can make you know, connections between parts and parts. And um, these cables are really nice. What's cool about them is they come into this licorice um, configuration, but then you just pull off the cables yeah, as you I need like them. You just peel them off. You just peel them off. So it's like you can, they don't, they're nice and neat and you get a full range of rainbow colors. And then as you need to wire up the parts, you use these plug and play, cap plug yeah. and play cables. Um, so you get uh, 20 short ones, and these are good for like connections that are like into this area. And then as you are doing more, you're like, okay, I need longer yeah, two cables. Two of each color and then two lengths. Yeah, and then you get together. long cables too. So these are the long cables. And these also peel off, and you can connect them all the way to the length of the board. So yeah. if you need to connect the things down here, you use a longer cable, so you get um, 20 of each which is tons, like yeah. you're set. You will be able to build any project. And the premium cables are like so nice and reusable and like you can just plug them around. And as you're learning electronics, you'll use them. And then if you need more wires for like really complicated projects, you can get bigger breadboards, more wires. Yeah, and believe easy. it or not, there's a big difference in all these types of wires. Yeah, these this are This is really a culmination nice. of years of us getting the best wires. So you see how Lady Ada like pulled it out of the breadboard and put it in very easily? Yeah. Um, that Super matters, nice. and then the quality There's of the... There's a little the, plastic grip that makes it very yeah, easy to... It, 
to yank and, and it doesn't fall insert. apart. It doesn't fall apart. So, um, all nice these solid things, connection. They, it matters. Oh yeah, this yeah, all matters. They're battle tested. Okay, battle tested. So next up, I'm gonna put this over here. All right, so sorry, I'm gonna take this stuff out. All right, so next up, let's go to um, this parts bag. Okay, so this parts bag is really exciting. So this is where we start to get into the electronic components. So because you have a breadboard, you have a lot of flexibility in the electronics that you can um, put on the board. So for example, um, we give you a whole bunch of fun components like these really beautiful jelly bean LEDs. So if you wanna build indicators, we've got red, green, blue LEDs, and uh, they're, they're bright, but they're also, um, they shine in multiple directions, like you can see them. And they're really large, which I think is, is really fun. I think when you're starting, having these big jelly bean parts is, is kind of enjoyable. So I really dig these. So you get um, six LEDs, uh, two of each color, red, green, and blue. So that's the LEDs. And then to go with the LEDs, you also need some resistors. So we give you a bunch of resistors. You get um, some 10K and some 560 ohm resistors. So there you go. Um, the 560 ohms are good for the LEDs. Um, the 10Ks are also good for the LEDs, but they're best for the sensors. And we'll talk about the sensors in a little bit. You also get uh, two potentiometers. These are twisting sensors. So you can measure the twist. You know, it's sort of like you change the volume on your stereo. This is the small version of that. And it plugs into your breadboard very easily. And then you can use it to twist and change you know, the brightness of your LEDs or you can change settings. You also get these nice big buttons. I like these big buttons. Again, I, I think beginners benefit from having big parts. Yeah. So I think like, you know, finger friendly buttons, not the ones that hurt your finger when yeah, you're pressing. Yeah, like, like, I thought about that too. Like you who's gonna be bash them. Yeah, and like when you're when you're a beginner, especially when you're younger, you don't necessarily want the you know, you have to like really press hard or they're like the buttons are too small. Yeah, so, so these are a little bigger. Sure they were but I think it's good. I think, yeah. I think big is nice. And again, you get a full-size breadboard, so there's plenty of space. Plenty room. So you get three of those buttons, so that's plenty. Um, you also get a light sensor. So this is a photo cell, and this is a light-sensitive resistor. So these resistors are fixed, and they're only one resistance, and the resistance is you can read it with the colors. The colors tell you what the resistance is. There's a color code. And this is a sensor that the resistance varies based on how much light there is. So the more light the higher, the lower the resistance. I think, okay. I can't remember. So this is a sensor that can detect light. And then you also get two capacitors, which are handy. Um, you know, we weren't sure exactly, there's not like a project that goes with these, but if you end up needing um, them for some reason, we wanted to include them. Maybe future projects, people will use these components. Um, and this is the other potentiometer. So you get three buttons and then two twisties and a light sensor. And then there's some more sensors you get. So you also get a flex sensor. So this was the same sensor that was in um, the Nintendo Power Glove, but I think a lot of people who get this kit are probably not, they're a little young, so you probably don't remember the Power Glove. But it was um, a gaming glove that would detect your finger bends, and that's how you would use it to like, you know, for example, if you were, uh, we didn't have first person shooters back then, but let's say you did. Uh, you would use this as a trigger, for example. Or if you were um, manipulating something in space, like, you know, Minecraft, you were grabbing something, it would detect that you grabbed something. So this is what flex sensors are for. But they're kind of fun yeah. because, you know, as they bend, you can detect how much bending there is. So I, we thought this was a fun, more advanced sensor to include. Um, and then there's also a temperature sensor. So this is just like, you know, they have that light sensor that detects light, this is a sensor that detects temperature. So it's like a little thermometer that you can connect to your feather and it's very precise. You can tell the temperature, um, think up to like 100 degrees centigrade, so like boiling water. I mean, you shouldn't put this in boiling water, but it would be able to, to sense that heat. So um, if you're building projects that you want to tell temperature, you know, you hold it and you can tell how uh, warm you are, um, this sensor can do that for you. So it's a kind so of sensor. As uh, folks dig into the types of electronics, uh, the temperature sensor, for example, mm -hmm. it's analog data coming in, yeah. and you'll be able to convert it to something 
else. Yeah, and we even have a full tutorial showing how to use it. So a lot yeah. of these sensors we've been using for so long that we have a lot of really good information and documentation on them. So yeah. you know, we'll we'll have projects with the feather that show them, but it's already these are well known parts with a history, and they're not like new and weird and like nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like oh, here's an obscure thing that nobody knows about. This is like a really well-known common sensor so it's a really good way to get started yeah like so the goal especially for the parents watching along here is mm -hmm. um, the young folks get spun up on what feather is and then there's the comprehensive tutorial for each sensor so it's like I got it going it can blink and it's like well what if you wanted to know the temperature but in the temperature sensor and then you can look at the temperature tutorial so um, all of the tutorials and guides work together mm -hmm. this is um, the first step of your long journey of learning electronics and more. Yeah. Um, and then I feel we've got a couple more components. Okay, so you get this RGB LED. So just like you have these individual LEDs and yeah, they're like one. red, green, and blue, this one is red, green, blue all in one. And so this one is kind of a diffuse, you know, it's a soft white casing. And so as you learn red, green, and blue LEDs and you learn about color theory and how you can mix colors, you, know, you can make this LED pink or teal or yellow. It's, it's a lot um, more fun because you can change the colors around. And then of course, yeah. then you can go upgrade to the, you know, once you're comfortable with the RGB LED, now you get um, 32 of them in a grid. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. So and it's so like you, can, you build up yeah, skill. Yeah, you, you do one and then you're like, that was fun. And then this one and then that one. Yeah. So you can build up your skill set. And we also have a piezo sensor. Uh, sorry, piezo buzzer. It is, although you know you can use them as a sensor, but that's a secret. Um, these are little beepers. So they make like little beep tones, like beep, beep. Yeah. And you can make little songs with them. And it's also a really popular component to make tones. Um, little synthesizers, um, you, know, you can even um, do uh, little speak, speaky libraries I've, I've seen. You can make it talk a little bit yeah. um, with a very kind of 70s voice, but it can work. So it's a little speaker um, that you can connect to your feather. Yeah, so many of us grew up with computers and that was as good as it got. Yeah, this is very that was it. Uh, that was it. talking moose. Yeah. Esque. Nobody remembers talking moose. Okay, and then finally, um, so you know, you've got a lot of inputs and outputs. We decided also to include a 16 by two LCD. And the LCD is pre-soldered for you. So just like the feather is, um, and you can plug it into your breadboard and I'll show this off um, in a bit, but it has um, text that you can display. So, you know, when you go to the store and they ring you up and they have the little um, display that says your total is, you know, $16.83. This is the same part that they use. And so you can make your own little, well, I wouldn't make a cash register unless you really wanted to, but it can be handy for if you make a project that senses lighter temperature, it can then print out, hey, the, the temperature is, you know, 78 degrees and the light level is dark. And yeah, you can also have a little LED light up based on a certain temperature. So you, all these things work together. Yeah, so all these things work together. You can use like the potentiometer, change the color, and also change, you know, based on temperature, ba change what the light level is, or yeah. it can be a night light when it gets dark, um, the NeoPixels light up. So there's a lot of interactivity, a lot of flexibility in this. We wanted to make something that um, built off of the hundreds of tutorials we already have. So it isn't like, you know, oh my God, you like have to start from the very beginning. You're you're using a base of tutorials and technologies. You know, we didn't have to write our own IDE or, or programming language. You're going to use a programming language that's been like well used by all these makers for like a ten years or so. And I think I think that's it. I think yeah. I got everything. You got through it. So, so this was this was the unboxing that we wanted to get started. And then we have a bunch of uh, demos and some things that uh, you can do with it. Um, one other thing to note is that um, for the, the overachievers, which a lot of our uh, customers, community, and especially the beginners that are just going to sponge this up completely and mm -hmm. go nuts with it, go nuts. Um, you'll be able to do things like have it internet connected and work with Adafruit I.O. So uh -huh. when, you talk, when you hear about internet of things, so start off with learning uh, temperature and blinking LEDs and just getting um, used to how you can take sensor information and then eventually you'll want it to do something online and uh, we have our free service maker.io that will allow you to do that as well so we wanted to have all these things together 
So uh, it can go as far as you want. And uh, the Ada box uh, 02, a 3, a 04, and all the ones that we're doing, um, all of these will uh, play nicely mm -hmm. together as you learn more. And yeah, and as you get used to, as you get used to feathering all these components, yeah, you can build robotics with them. These are the basis of um, robots, they're the basis of medical devices, the, the basis of toys and games. So all this stuff, yeah, it all works together as, as like this, it is an ecosystem yeah. of, of parts and sensors. And so I thought this was a good, you know, we were kind of coming up with what would Adabox 1 be. I thought, okay, let's start with something that's very universal that can help somebody get started because you know, we wanted to make sure that if someone was subscribing this would be a you know i thought a lot of people who subscribe to these boxes they're beginners they want to give them as a gift to beginners that's why we were, were this one's focused for you know this is your first exploration this is like your base kit of electronic parts so yeah I think we got it all yeah and you know over the last 10 years We've seen a lot of successes with electronics and a lot of times where things just didn't work for people. So this first five minutes that uh, especially a young person has and when they start needing to do any type of coding or software, um, that needed to be special and, and fast and interesting. And yes, you can always solder stuff later and you can get things that need to be soldered, but we wanted to make sure that you didn't need to do that to start. Like when you open up the box, you're you're learning. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we have some demos okay. and more Lady Ada, so yep. we have to, uh, you have to go to your desk. Okay, so we're going to go around yeah. to my desk, and um, yeah, I'm going to show off like a demo or two of what you can do with the Ada Box kit, some some fun examples, and I'll, um, oh, did you want, maybe when we get there, we'll also look at the tutorial? Or? Yeah, we'll, okay. do, we'll do that too. We'll go through some tutorials and more. So, okay. All right, so swing around, come over okay. to your desk. All right, we're right And back. Uh, let's do that. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, well, that worked out. Okay, so I'm over here now at my uh, computer desk because to program microcontrollers like the Feather, you're going to need to use your computer. Um, so do you want to maybe go to the computer and actually we'll just, we'll just show the, the guide off and then we'll, we'll get right into just showing a demo? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so this is the um, tutorial that we just launched. It's just the, it's just the unboxing tutorial. So if you're interested in more details about all the components, you know, we have a lot of details and photos and notes and, um, you know, pictures and information. And for like the breadboard, we got that cool animation. We have, we even put it in Colin's lab because uh, we did a video with Colin uh, like a year or two ago about breadboards. They did an excellent job. So um, we include that in. So this is just like a little guide all about all the components. It's not meant to be like, this is all the tutorials. This is just explaining. It's your reference for yeah. um, LEDs. Hey, can, you, can you pop a, another um, tab open? Yeah. And uh, just for fun, yeah. just to show you, like, you know, we've been thinking about this for a long time. Uh, have learn.adafruit.com in that tab. Okay, so learn. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just type feather um, in the search that starts to bring stuff in. And just, like, scroll. So, um, especially for the, the parents, the educators, and the folks out there that got an Ada box or thinking about it, we built this in mind uh, and in context of all the things that we were going to do years ago. So Ada box was a project that we thought about five or six years ago, and all of the things that we do at Adafruit had w an option, and this is where we're at now, where we can do a subscription box where you get to now explore all the tutorials because you have a, a base to start mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. So um, especially a young person, if they type in Feather, it unlocks all the projects. Yeah, and we have, you know, for every component, we have, um, you know, we have a NeoPixel. Oh, i got to find it. Here it is. So we have, like, a guide just about the NeoPixel Feather Wings. So um, if you want to dive right in and get a lot of details, we have a full tutorial that talks about it and has um, example code. And of course, we have our NeoPixel Uber guide that teaches you like everything you'd ever want to know about NeoPixel. So it's a great way to get started with um, Actually, I'm going to do a fun thing too. Yeah, what's up? So I'm going to go over to the, I have this double chat thing going on. So mm -hmm. um, this is kind of neat. Um, Chris, okay. Chris said something really smart. Thank you, okay. Chris. Thanks, Chris. said, this is more work than a typical 
box subscription service, uh, those just give things. This gives knowledge. And yeah. thank you so much. Like, Yay. you know, we, we kind of t toss around ideas and what we want to say with AdaBox, but um, usually the people who know us and see us say it even better. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's, it's a, it gives things, but it, more important, it gives knowledge. And it also, it's like a, a set of keys that can unlock so many opportunities. That's why this is AdaBox one. Yeah. It's like the first one. So that's why we, we decided to go with something like this. Yeah. Also, okay. you know, we have, a, we have a, um, a tutorial for a temperature sensor, which it, you know, we'll, we'll adapt this and, and show specifically how to use it with Feather. But like, we already have so much information about all these components. So you, know, you, can, you can totally go to town with all this stuff. But back to here. Um, so yeah, you know, there's nice big photos of all the components and stuff, and you know, push buttons and like I did this really nice diagram showing how push buttons are connect on the inside, and all that good stuff. And you get a coupon code and like there's a LCD, and so you can see. Do you want to um, what again? Do some demos soon? Yeah, I just wanted to show the tutorial. So like this isn't meant to be like everything, but it's a good place to get started. So I do suggest after you finish unboxing, to go through this and read it. It'll, it'll take you a couple hours to read through everything. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so much information. Just to get yourself acquainted with all the parts so that when you explore more tutorials and projects and we say, okay, get the potentiometer, you're not like, uh, is that the green thing or the yellow thing? What is that? You'll, you'll have familiarity. Um, so yeah, if you go to the overhead, um, I just wired up the LCD and um, I wired up basically just like we have, we have a guide on character LCDs and because it's Arduino compatible, it works quite well. And when you um, upload example code that we posted, give it a second. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, it's compiling. It I'll a ask a question while I do this. Can you stack feather wings like Arduino shields? And if so, how many can be stacked? You can stack, yes, you can stack them as long as there aren't pin conflicts, just like the um, shields. You can stack as many as you want, but some really only make sense if they're on top. Like the NeoPixel um, feather wing kind of really, really goes on top because you have to show it off. But for like the motor and the servo and um, other wings, yeah, you can stack them. Okay. A lot of them are displays, so they do kind of go on top and they stay on top. Yeah, you, you want can, a display in the sandwich. Yeah, but we also have the doubler, which you can check out, which lets you put yeah. two in a row. So you could have two displays the if you want. The doubler. The doubler. I just... <laughs> She's like a cool Batman villain. Yeah. Um, Better than the stapler. We had the. <laughs> yeah, I could tell this earlier. Yeah. So this is just a demo, and this is the example code that comes with Arduino. It just says "Hello World," and then it counts up a number, so it shows you how to use an LCD. But then, let's say you wanted to add um, the temperature sensor, so you can put the temperature sensor over here, and then can you go to the computer and. Um, we have a demo at the bottom of here using it with three volts, which is it's a three volt microcontroller. It's actually the best way to use it anyways. So the leftmost pin goes to power. So let's do that. Can you go to the overhead? No, because you don't really see a diagram. I'll just do it. Okay, so the leftmost pin goes to power, so it's this power rail. And then the rightmost pin goes to ground. Oops, it's on power, ground. And then the middle pin goes to analog zero. So that's over here. And that's why we have these nice long wires. You can see this is kind of cool. Just plug right in. And then uh, can you go back to my compi? So then we have a, another demo where we combine the two sketches together. So the LCD sketch that comes with Arduino. We add in the temperature sketch here, which will calculate the temperature and then uh, print it to the LCD. Now this isn't a beginner project. This is actually a much more advanced project, but I'm just showing you how you can combine the parts together to um, you know, make it a temperature meter, for example. So let's upload this and then uh, give it a second. Arduino is compiling. I like to have all the text show you that it's working. Okay, and then can you go to the um, overhead? Okay, and now you see it's kind of warm in here because we turned the AC off so it wouldn't be really loud. Um, but if you grab the temperature sensor, I can make the temperature go up even a little bit up to 
80 degrees. I'm hot. But, um, yeah, it's a little bit warm in here. But that's cool. And then it'll slowly um, drift down. I can also add, in case it's a little bit noisy, oh, you can add some capacitance here. That might help. Oops. Let me reset this. Yeah, so that's, that's like, for example, how you can add a temperature sensor to a, um, an LCD. And so then you're like, okay, well, I want to add, like, NeoPixel shields. So let's plug that on top. And then can you go to the computer again? And this time I'll upload the NeoPixel strand test, which is the default example we have for NeoPixels. Okay, and then can you um, go to the overhead? So now we're running this demo and it's like super bright. You can see there's green LEDs and then it shows oh, cool. blue LEDs and then it does like a cool, like crazy effect. And then a rainbow swirl. So that's a good demo of NeoPixel. And that's kind of nice because you just plug it in and all, you know you have basically all these LEDs to play with. Um, so even if, you know, you're not comfortable using a breadboard, what I like about the feather wings is you just plug them in and you're ready to go. So that's cool. And the LCD is like totally I like the, annoyed. Yeah, I like the RGB. I like that. And then of course you can combine the two, you know, you can have the temperature display in the LCD and then like the NeoPixels change color based on um, the temperature or maybe you have potentiometers or buttons that change what is being displayed, and then this like tells you some sort of, um, you know, like what program it's displaying. Because there's like, you know, you can tell there's a lot of different programs you can run to make this festive. How do you like it? I do. I'm trying to. Uh, what? What? Well, this is uh, also. Um, Periscope. You're periscoping? Yeah, we okay. tried to get a little bit of everything here. So this is, if you're on Twitter, you could probably see this here, but this is all the stuff. He's like, ah, on. I'm so confused because I'm actually oh, using the same yeah. LCD pen, so it's like getting weird data. Normally you would just disconnect it. Here, I'll turn them off. Yeah, you're, like you're, a, you're, you're doing too much streaming. I'm streaming in the streams. Okay, well that's my demo. So yeah. do, is there any other questions? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna go to the, the questions here. Right. And uh, let's see. Do Double you, stream. Yeah, you know, pushing pushing the limits Your... of what's possible. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna go to the chat room here. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah. Hi. What? Are you, okay. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> People can't see why there's like I'm confused. Yeah. There's like Phil's holding this cell phone camera in my face. Yeah. There's all sorts of things going on here. Okay. And then there's a you know there's a cat over there too. Yeah. You know, for the okay, but that's the not periscope. fair because yeah, only the periscope, periscope people get to see the cat. Yeah. I can go grab the cat. What? I can go no, grab. No, I'll get the I'll get the cat for you. Okay. Uh, uh, can the battery be included? Uh, that it uh, five volts as well. What? Sorry. What was the question? Um, could the, uh, the battery that's included, uh, go to five volts? No, it's, uh, four volts approximately. And, and okay. Onto yeah. That, onto that. Like, okay. You want a cat, so I'm going to get a cat. Well. Like we're delivering. I like Adabox can, it also comes with a cat showing as long as uh, MOSFET's alive. The, the battery doesn't provide five volts, but you don't have to because everything in the box runs off of 3.3 volts. Actually, it kind of works best at three volts. And the LCD, you can power it from full, four volts from the battery, and it actually works really well. So that's kind of your, your best bet. Because the LCD is the only thing that likes five volt power. Um, but if you, if you just give it four volts from the battery pin, it works great. OK, what, what are you doing with this poor animal? Ready? Ta-da. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> All right, so here's the Ada box box. Okay, take this periscope away. Yeah, I will. Oh, okay. Man. Here, you can. It's a cat. It's making trouble. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, will there be Adabot specific guides? Yes. Uh, 
We yeah. Do, yeah, we do have one. We're gonna, we're gonna, well, we just launched, so we're gonna have a couple guides. Um, a lot of them will be like, hey, you can check out how to do this, and here's a project that you can do with it. But of course, people can also submit projects. You know, if you do a project on Instructables or Imager, just send them in, we'll post them up. Because there's, you know, infinite projects that you can do. Yeah. Um, the next thing is, uh, let's see. Um, can you run NeoPixel and servers at the same time? I think I tried that once and not sure. You if it can. Works. We actually even have a guide on how to do it. You just have to be careful. You you know you run the servo on a timer pin, yeah. and then you can do the NeoPixels. You just have to kind of be careful on how you do them. I think trinkets are the ones that really don't like doing both because you have to software servo. But yeah. the thirty two U four can has hardware timer. I'm pretty sure you can run servos off yeah. a hardware timer and um, works great. So someone just got here. Is there a list of what was in the box? Yeah, uh, adafruit.com slash adabox zero zero one. Yes. That'll get you there. All right. And then, uh, can you tell us the different similarities between base components and Mo stuff? And Mo stuff. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I mean, it's um, the feather comes with a microcontroller in it. And then you get a bunch of components like LEDs and buttons and resistors. Those are just basic components that are useful to build like any project. So yeah. you can, you know, whatever project you build, you're probably going to want buttons and indicators and potentiometers and stuff. And then the LCD displays text, but the feather itself is kind of the engine. That's like the base of it. So yeah. it's like the, the base component and everything else connects to it. So you're going to always use, I mean, you can build projects without the feather, but it would be a little, very, very basic. Um, the microcontroller is kind of what oh, makes it zero. interesting. Okay. Okay. So I'll, uh, can you tell us this different? Okay, well, I'll, I'll skip one and then we'll go back. Okay, um, do you need the first box for future ones? No, no. it's all standalone. They're all standalone. Purpose. Next up, can you tell us the difference and similarities between these base components and the M0 stuff? So, what's the difference between a Feather and an M0? The Feather M0 is a, is a more powerful processor, but it's not as familiar. So you can purchase an M0 Feather, but it's just it's going to be a different microcontroller, different processor. You can use it with Arduino, but it's more advanced, and it's still kind of under development. So it's not as recommended for beginners. Yeah. OK. Uh, next up, um, will, you, uh, will we stock optical encoders? So this is a general, regular Adafruit question. No, I don't, I don't think we have any optical encoders at this time. Like this? We don't, I mean, we don't have any. I don't have any plans. OK. Uh, next up, what kind of current draw does NeoPixel Shield have? And can it run off the LiPo that came in the box? Yeah, you can run off the LiPo. It'll automatically select from whichever tire, USB or, f or, or uh, the VBAT. Uh, works great. And um, we, you know, we already t the new Pixel Feather is actually quite old at this stage. One of the first feathers we designed. So it works great off a of battery. And it can draw a lot of current, but you set the brightness lower. Like this is at 20 brightness, so it's one tenth brightness. And it's like plenty bright. It can draw as you know. It can draw like a lot, but it's up to 60 milliamps per LED. But usually, the whole thing is about like 100. Yeah. Uh, will there be repeats of items in the box, or we try to avoid this? Well, we'll have a base thing like a feather, but yeah, there'll be different items, and each one has a different theme. Um, it's definitely meant for beginners who are just starting their mm -hmm. electronic journey. You may get wires in a future yeah. Ada box, so this is. Yeah, but that's always okay. But those are handy. Like yeah. you're gonna get different things. If you subscribe to all of them, you'll get some things that are similar. Because you're going to probably, if there's another one that has breadboarding, you'll probably get another breadboard and wires. And you might get another USB cable. But the projects and the kind of stuff that you would do would be different. Yeah. Um, as far as how rare are the pins, well, I can tell you there's not 10,000 of them. Um, but there is way more than 10. There are I don't believe, yeah, they're not. There's, there's not more than 10,000 of, the first, of each, the first bin. Each it has a different collectible. Yeah. So, so there's, there's going to be different collectibles each one. Yeah. I'm not going to say what they are, but um, like the first one gets a pin, the second one might get something different. Yeah, and if we ever reissue any of the pins, uh, there'll be enough of a difference so it's clear that it wasn't the one from the Adabox. Yeah. So, it's unique. Yeah. Okay, and then for the folks who are wondering what kind of themes for the boxes we're thinking of, um, look at the video. Awesome um, stuff. Yeah, look at the video. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on right now with MicroPython and robotics and wearables, uh, cosplay, sensors, biohacking, Internet of Things. If you look at the history of Adafruit um, from 3D printing to um, you know even Bitcoin stuff that came out, we're always 
um, doing interesting stuff that's very relevant. Also, you know, we're, we are actually being very dynamic. Some of the plans that we had for future Adabox are changing as new technologies are coming out. Yeah. So we're, you know, what comes out in Adabox 3 or 4 might change. I mean, even if I told you what we thought it was going to be, it might not be because, the, as yeah. you've seen, the maker market Yeah, radically. it could be like a Raspberry Pi 4 next year or something. You know, we don't know, maybe. Um, you know. The other thing is someone said for um, Adabox 007, 007, you should have like a spy theme. That's a That's really good cool. idea. We're probably going to do that. Yeah. So. There's plenty of yeah, spy gears and like yeah. cameras and um, Do you have to subscribe to purchase uh, or can you buy just one? Um, we might do something where you can buy just one, but right now you have to subscribe. Right now it's subscription. So you subscribe ahead of time and you get boxes in a, you know, going forward. Um, we're thinking about how we would, we, you know, we have almost all the components already in the store. They're not already soldered, but you can get all the individual parts not ready to go. And it's, it's going to be a lot more expensive, of course, because you don't get it in a kit box and you don't get those collectibles. But if you're like, oh, I really want to follow along, you can actually purchase the Feather and you can purchase the LCD and the NeoPixel yeah. wing right now and you just have to solder them together. That's yeah. the only trade-off. Okay. And then um, I'll answer this last question. Yeah, we're going to try to get international shipping. We want to get USA done first. And international is tough because there's um, imports and uh, exports and batteries and more. So we might work with distributors, we might do it ourselves, but uh, we want to make sure that we start and build a sturdy foundation before we go international. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First one is, you know, it's interesting, how long have we been working on this first one? Well, this start, this ended up on my to-do list seven years ago. I this know, has been but on like my, actively. Well, um, you know, if you want to create a universe, first you have to bake a pie, right. um, you know, you have to start from scratch. I think Carl Sagan said that, but I mean, that you know, we had to build an Adafruit before we could ship an Adabox. Yeah. We did. We didn't even have enough room in our apartment for this, by the way. Yeah. Like now we have a factory, so. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada is our unboxing. Okay. Of that was Adabox a good unboxing. On. So special thanks to everyone at Adafruit. Um, the list goes on forever. Um, I'll just say this. This was one of the biggest uh, team efforts of mm -hmm. the company. Everyone across every department from dev, new products, shipping, kitting, our remote team members. It just, it just goes on and on and on. Inventory, storage, fab. Like, it's... It's, it, it, this represents so much of, of Adafruit mm -hmm. and uh, the design and thought that went into it and the uh, creative that Bruce did. I mean, it just, it really, it really is. Nice uh, tissue paper. It, it really is um, the best of us. You know, this is, this is what Adafruit does and we're pretty proud of it. Um, what I'll do is I'll also, uh, bing, bing, bing. I'll, I'll show who out there as part of this. Okay. And uh, this handy dandy photo. You have the photo? Yeah. And drag and drop. A little drag and drop action here. Okay, so, drag and boop. Drop. So this is us. And these are the people at Adafruit. And they are thrilled that you like Adabox. And uh, we thank you. All. This was it, yeah. Everybody in this photo had a part in it. Yeah. Shippers, kitters, everyone. Fabrication, um, team office, yeah. uh, community support and publishing. Yeah. I mean, just everybody, you know. So, we, it's made out of people. It is made out of people. And uh, thank you, everyone who uh, was in community support and publishing. Uh, answering a bunch of questions, uh, helping people with credit cards, you name it. Like, like I said, every part of the company mm -hmm. was part of this. So um, thanks, y'all. And we will um, be doing our shows during the week. Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, some stuff tomorrow. And uh, a personal favor, you know, the media doesn't cover uh, companies like us because we don't have funding. We don't have loans. We're successful. It's a woman-owned company. So it's basically like invisible to the press and more. And this is the first maker of subscription box that came from a company like Adafruit. So if you want to help get the word out, just tweet, public, you know, put links somewhere, anywhere where you know where people might want to see this. That would help us out. 
and of course, you know, sign up on uh, Adafruit.com. So thanks, y'all. Okay. That was an unboxing. Okay. All right. Let's rock out. Woo! Okay, stay tuned. Of course, there we will be more, more, uh, more right. Adaboxes coming out. Bye-bye, everybody. Sign up. Subscribe. Thank <sniffs> you.